Pancake everyone! Today there won't be any interesting facts, well, maybe just one that accidentally slipped in. There won't be any top lists of who's better, faster or stronger. Because sometimes that doesn't really matter. Today we have compiled a collection of boat, speedboat and yacht incidents, and sometimes even entire dry cargo ships. And most importantly, incidents involving people operating these vessels, big and small. Some of them can be laughed at without a guilty conscience, some will surprise you by the mere fact that people survived after such incidents, and some will be astonishing in their lack of professionalism. Because in our collection today you'll find not only amateur fishermen. Yes, yes, professionals also make mistakes. Pour yourself some tea, get comfortable, but be careful not to choke. Let's go! This video might teach us not to take children fishing. Or not to bring along any equipment you're not ready to part with easily and quickly. Keep an eye on the boy's hands. Tablet? No tablet. Tablet? No tablet. But at least there is a fish. It's a shame we don't get to see the fisherman's face when he realizes his beloved iPad disappeared. The boy's expression speaks volumes, but not everything. And here a group of friends is pretending to be in a James Bond movie. Sunglasses on their faces, girls in skimpy bikinis. It would all be fine if it weren't for the shaking. They're trying to keep a straight face because everything in spy movies should be serious. But after a second, two, three, the driver goes flying onto the floor. A couple of girls follow suit. The guy in the blue shirt is clearly feeling very unwell. Hopefully there were no concussions involved. If of course there was anything left to concuss. There is a saying, the insatiable are never satisfied. Standing neck deep in water, yet asking for a drink. That's what we could say about our next heroes. They were standing neck deep in water, but their only concern was how to save the dead fish they caught. Yes, dead fish already. These two dimwits boats sank due to overload. They were just lucky that the lake was shallow enough for them to stand. At first they begged for help for a long time. And then, once the rescuers arrived on boats, their first priority was to pull their fishing nets out of the water, saying, save the biggest catch. A sunken phone or a floating boat engine would obviously not be as significant a loss as the absence of fish soup that evening. At some point, the person filming got entangled in a net on the bottom and got scared it would drag them away with the current. But when his comrades pulled him into the boat, probably due to stress, he started repeating two jokes over and over again that he got his boots wet and that the most important thing was that they saved the phone. By the way, the phone was bubbling so much it's unlikely to be salvageable. Oh well, the main thing is that he didn't stop filming even for a second. And now we can enjoy the story in all its glory from a first-person perspective. And if you think that such adventures like in the best Hollywood movies teach us something, then no. Here is another video about a fisherman's adventure, and once again it's greed that leads to the boat overturning. Everything flies into the water, and a selection of colorful language fills the air. But let's just enjoy the music. Yes, fishing is a dangerous business. You sail on a boat, capturing the beautiful sky, enjoying magnificent views of the lake, the bridge and the clouds. And then suddenly, bam! Not a spark, not a storm, just a flip. Water everywhere. Thank goodness you're alive! Or take this case where one fisherman helps another. The lake is clearly deep, and his inflatable boat capsized. Luckily, a rescuer appeared, silently gathered all the fishing gear, even found the paddle and towed them to the shore. Videos like these give hope for humanity with their acts of selfless assistance. But… but it's fishing after all. Meaningless and merciless. The stories about it are endless. The madness that takes place? Diverse. Lucky are those who fall asleep while cruising on a speedboat or sitting on a stool on the shore. Then there are those fishermen who need to be rescued from the lake. But even that seems trivial compared to these daredevils. What were they thinking? It's a mystery. But let's rejoice for these grown men who have retained their childlike spirit. Only with that can we justify throwing grenades into the water near the boat. Wait, wait. What is this if not the performance of the world champion and European champion? The one and only master of figure skating on a boat. Look at the glide, the pirouettes. Is that not the most difficult triple axel with a complex exit? Just look at how he enjoys it, how he shows off. Surely his artistry deserves high scores. I won't even mention the difficulty of the routine. It's a spectacle. Talent. Maestro. All the world's medals belong to this athlete. 
Is it just me, or has our champion finally found a rival? The athlete known as Brother is spin searching for his rhythm. Is it an equipment issue? Will the title remain unchallenged? Yes, he did it. One spin, two spins, three, four… Although he lacks variety in his routine. And he still needs to work on gracefulness. Oh, what a vibrant ending to the program. No, it's still too early for him to claim the title of the champion of champions. And now let's get serious. Look at how the motorboat flips over due to an awkward turn. Whether it's the Hellman's failed joke or something else, in the next second the boat starts sinking. The depth seems considerable. At this point the question arises. Where are you getting into? What are you trying to salvage? The main thing is that you saved yourselves and are swimming towards the shore. Who cares about the boat? Until two more people emerge from under the water. These guys definitely stared death in the face. And it's good that it all ends well. Eventually, help arrived and assisted them in reaching the shore. Or here is what happened to the lover of high speeds and racing. In just a minute he goes from complete superiority in the catch me if you can category to panic tones in his voice. All because he forgot about safety measures. Sometimes it's important to think before engaging in another senseless thrill that could cost a life. But the sky at the end of the video looks beautiful. Those disappearing clouds in the pixelated camera are quite a sight. Do you think it's only amateurs who find themselves in absurd situations on boats? We believe that's mostly the case. After all, professionals are more likely to encounter dangerous situations. Take the racing footage, for example, with those incredibly fast boats reaching speeds of up to 420 km per hour. Just to put it into perspective, the technical regulations of Formula One prescribe a maximum speed of 363 km per hour. And if you think that road accidents are scarier than water accidents, we're here to dispel that notion. Just look at how the hull fragments scatter, how the boat loses balance due to a failed maneuver and flips over. It's a good thing that making the boat as spectacularly wrecked as possible is the goal of the Wreck Wednesday competition. It's terrifying to imagine what it looks like from the racer's perspective. Ah, wait! We do have footage from their point of view. No need for amusement parks with this kind of experience. How it feels to reach such speeds is left to our imagination. But look, here you can see that the driver doesn't even immediately reach for the lever, let alone pull it with the necessary force. And since we're comparing water and land transportation, you've probably heard many stories about drivers who, relying on luck, drive their trucks or lorries under a knownly low bridge and get stuck blocking the road. Well, similar situations happen in water too. All types of ships from sailboat to speedboats and yachts have found themselves in such predicaments. One excuse. Sometimes it's not the captain's fault. It just happens that the bridge lowers itself. Do you believe such a cause? Alright, what about parking? Do you think parking a car is challenging? Yes, of course it's a separate skill that is evaluated in driving exams. And despite the fact that there are exams for operating boats, yachts, ferries and other large vessels, some captains still struggle with it, just like some drivers on land. Sometimes a passenger liner crashes into a dock, leaving a gaping hole in its hull, while a yacht pushes a smaller boat away simply because it doesn't have enough space to maneuver. It should be understood that while it may look simple from a distance, in reality expensive boats end up damaged. So much so that they may be beyond repair. And not only does a ferry collide with a smaller yacht, it also presses it against the quay. Let's be honest, it's unlikely that the yacht captain intended to park so close. Although it does happen that small boats and yachts collide with larger vessels and suffer the consequences. They don't do it intentionally, of course. It's usually due to either a malfunction or a mistake by the captain. But you can't explain the hole in the stern that way. Or why one ship suddenly cuts off another in the best traditions of any land race. Why do captains risk not only their own vessel, but also the lives of their crew members? It's unlikely that they evaluate the situation that way. They probably just think they can get away with it. Or they don't think at all. And our favorite is, of course, the container ship that, while pulling out, grazes an empty bulk carrier standing nearby. As a result of the collision, several containers fall into the bulk carrier, and some may even end up in the water. Although, who's to say it was an accident? Maybe the container ship got rid of something illegal on the sly. So the sailors on the bulk carrier can only say, it's not mine, someone planted it. And don't think that such incidents with container ships are rare. 
They often miscalculate the dimensions and crash into already moored ball carriers or port cranes, breaking them as easily as a five-year-old breaks a sandcastle on the beach. And we still wonder why particularly large container ships are not allowed to enter certain canals? Just look at what happens even in channels that are prepared for difficult parking and equipped with rails and carts for assistance. It didn't help. It didn't work out. Something went wrong, and an electric tugboat gets crushed like a beer can on the head of a thug. Yes, you could say they are the hooligans of the transportation world. Except they don't get new containers, they lose their own in the process. So, if you've been waiting a long time for your order, perhaps it's already at the bottom of the sea. Some people clearly have trouble with the sense of dimensions of their boats and ships. Although, when you're big and heavy, perhaps you can plow forward causing small and light sailboats to shy away from you like scared elephants. Or, as seen here, the fear is lost, and a concrete dock no longer scares you, so you can ram it with a bow. For example, a fisherman is peacefully sailing along quiet lane calmly. Whether he's sleeping or catching fish, everything is peaceful. And suddenly, BAM! Another boat rams him from behind, clearly faster and larger. Yes, fisherman, we understand your pain and indignation. But that was just a close call. The other person, on the other hand, was literally rammed and ended up in the water. Luckily, the boats are inflatable. Or imagine sitting in a boat, the engine roaring, water splashing, it's beautiful. And suddenly, BOOM! Instead of water, you're surrounded by grass. It happens if you can't handle the steering. Many people clearly overestimate the power of their means of transportation. Otherwise, it's simply inexplicable how a car ends up towing a boat in the water. And there are not just one or two cases like that. Drivers are so confident in the omnipotence of their cars, just imagine their surprise when a boat makes their vehicle's body lift up, preventing them from continuing their journey. And those daredevils on jet skis who ride onto the cargo platform of a pickup truck, not caring about the car or the jet ski? Even in the most optimistic cases, it doesn't go without dents. Not to mention those skilled individuals who try to replicate such maneuvers after watching videos on the internet. Yes, without proper practice, you may find yourself on a jet ski standing on its tail, or in the water, desperately clutching the handlebars. But what can you do when it's not human error, but a mechanical failure to blame? Just imagine yourself sailing on a sailboat. Yes, the weather isn't great, the sky is cloudy, and the waves are a bit high, but everything is under control, and you're happily relaxing, content, until the sound of a siren shatters the air. You lift your head from the book to understand what's happening and see a ship racing full speed ahead directly towards the side of your sailboat. You think it will turn. You think, what kind of maniac is driving that thing? You think unpleasant thoughts about the ship's crew, who keep aiming their nose at your side and honking so aggressively. And then you notice black smoke billowing out of the ship's chimney. Or maybe it's not from the chimney, but from the ship itself, you think, as you rush with the crew to attend to the sails. Hopefully everyone was rescued and no one got hurt. Except for the sailboat. It was left with a noticeable dent in its hull. In any case, we believe that people who navigate yachts or boats, speedboats or ferries, cargo ships or sailboats, truly love their seafaring steeds, and their hearts bleed when they have to witness their beloved vessel sinking. All we can do is wish to avoid storms, not ignore safety regulations, and be more cautious in the water. Otherwise, we'll just end up with another video about absurd, dangerous, or simply funny incidents on boats. See you in our upcoming videos!